Well, hey everybody and welcome to another Photoshop User TV. I am Pete Collins, one of the Photoshop guys, and I am here with the one, the only. See, I gotta pause just a minute. I was a little ahead of that right there. Let him get, let him yeah, take, let it let it in, take it in. Oh, yeah. There. Yes. Ah. And now I'm here with the one, the only, Corey Barker. Yeah. <laughs> How's it oh, going, yeah. everybody? Hey, Corey, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. You? Uh, enough of that. Hey, guys, we're part <laughs> of the uh, Photoshop guys here, and we're at Photoshop User TV, brought to you by Kelby One, the fine makers of Photoshop User Magazine. Your place to get all kinds of great tips, tricks, and phenomenal stuff that you can be inspired by right there. There you have it. Photoshop User. All right. Wow, how's that for a plug? Speaking of plugs, <laughs> <laughs> you said you weren't going to say anything. I know. All right. I all right. Know. <laughs> but they look natural. Yes, they do. They, do yes, they, did, they did a fine job. Corey is going to start us off with a tip that involves a grungy hallway. Grungy hallways. No, it's actually about a perspective thing. Um, new feature in Photoshop, the perspective warp, is uh, really kind of cool. Actually, I saw it demoed um, it depends a while on your back. Perspective. Depends on your perspective, actually, yes. But um, surprisingly uh, really good how it works. It can use, be used in a number of different ways. In fact, I'll just show you some more obvious uses for it. Um, if I have an image like this, um, say, and you have this box that's been shot, obviously, at a very specific angle. And it's not a 3D object, sadly. <laughs> but you want to change the angle of it. Well, um, you can simply go to the Edit menu, and there it is located right there, Perspective Warp. And it's going to go ahead and launch. Now, the great thing is it has this great little guide that shows you how to get started and how to go ahead and draw the grids and get them connected. So, um, so another step one, but I'm just going to go ahead and just start drawing my box here. So we'll just go and get a grid. And then once you do it, go ahead and just grab the corners and adjust them so that they are conforming to the shape of that side of the box. Now I'm going to go out here into the uh, right side here and draw out another box. Now, notice the two lines that are close to each other here in the grid are, gr are glowing blue. It is assuming that these are going to be connected planes, so when I release, it's actually going to go ahead and snap to it and connects it over there. And I can just go over here and adjust this side to this perspective as well. Now, once the grid planes are drawn, you simply go up in the options bar and choose warp, and the box changes, and now I can go over here and adjust the perspective rather accurately. So if I wanted to do something a little bit more exaggerated perhaps for something maybe like an ad or something. But you can see how it's really handling the perspective really well and being able to get it and make it something that it wasn't before. And of course once you are done just simply press enter and the new change takes effect and it's a pretty good accurate distortion. Actually you know if you don't go too crazy it actually doesn't distort the image all that much which is uh, something that was a problem with um, Things like using vanishing point, which was, was always really challenging um, in many ways. Um, and another way I use it, actually I did this. This was something I did for a, my, my Down and Dirty seminar, um, actually for the, the workbook. And interesting how you can use this to change the perspective of a scene. So I'm looking down this hallway. If I go over here and choose perspective warp, I'm going to do this, almost treat it as if I was using vanishing point in a way. But I'm going to put a one ground plane or one grid plane here in the back. And then I'm going to add others on the sides. So you can actually add, add multiples here. And let's we'll move this out so it's kind of taking the shape of the walls in the scene here. We'll go ahead and draw out another one. And you'll notice as you get closer, it goes ahead and connects itself to that ground plane right there. And we'll go ahead and add another one here. Oh, I don't want to grab that yet. We'll drag out another box here. And as I move the elements closer, there we go. And it'll snap right to it. So we're basically creating a similar type of grid box we would in Vanishing Point, but here we're getting a little bit more control over being able to, to distort it. So now if I go and choose Warp, I can go in and grab these elements and move them around and get me a different perspective. I can make the angle of view a little bit more exaggerated. Oh, we're getting a little I crazy like here. that. That's a good look. That's getting crazy. Here's where it can get challenging. There we go. So there we go, back in place. So I can change the angle of view here, get a little um, exaggerated with it, do different things with it. But being able to go in here and just modify this, uh, whether it's a building or a hallway or a vehicle or a box or anything like that, it really does give you a good... I'll just straighten that up a little bit there. 
And if I press enter there, so there's what we started with. And if I just crop it in, I've really got a different perspective altogether just by changing that angle of view in there and uh, using that perspective warp. So it's something to play around with. There's a lot of different um, uses for it other than the obvious things. So you want to go in there and just kind of experiment with it. So. Well, I, I think one of, the, one of the quickest and easiest things to think about is if you're trying to do a composite or whatever and you've got a background that you like, but maybe the model or whatever you have in front, they don't have the same perspective. You can come in and change the background, mm -hmm. have whatever elements you have fit into that that a lot better. Yeah, and absolutely. so there's definitely a lot of potential behind that. Absolutely. Really making it work for you. So all right. What are we gonna do now? Let's take a quick break and we're gonna come right back. We got a few things going on. Pete's got something. I see something, <laughs> I got something. more with animals. I got something. He's turning into Aaron Blaze with his love of animals. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> Well, hi everyone, we are back, and Pete's gonna have something here just in a moment, but first we need to talk about the Super Bowl of Photoshop World events. Not the actual Super Bowl, no. Of course it is, Photoshop World is gonna be in Las Vegas September 3rd through the 5th, and we couldn't be more excited. Um, myself, I'm, uh, Pete's gonna be there, myself, all the rest of the Photoshop guys, among the very best in photography and Photoshop out there. There's, there's your list right there, so. We're all going to be there. We've got, uh, of course, pre-con day with all the, the um, sp uh, special workshops, the party. It's, it's, it's Vegas. It's a good time. It really is. You know, so. it's, it's our favorite time of the year. It, it absolutely is. Besides and Christmas and some other things. Besides, uh, it almost is like Christmas, though. But, uh, but it really is a lot of fun. So be sure to check out PhotoshopWorld.com and get everything you need to do to find out. So make sure you are there. If you haven't been there before, please check it out. You owe it to yourself to come try it out. And if you do, you'll be hooked and come back again and again. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Pete, what do you have? All right. Well, a couple weeks ago, I started talking about shadow perspectives and I got some feedback and some comments uh, and some people asked to, uh, to share a little bit more about how the shadows, how to get them to look right. And, uh, and so I wanted to just, uh, talk about a couple things here and really it comes down to how well you understand ideas about geometry, physics, perspectives. Unfortunately, those are things you need to know or you need to just be a savant when it comes to figuring that stuff out. But I want to show you a couple things that are going to help. First off, let's see, since last week I had a, uh, a cheetah, I thought I'd bring a cheetah back up again this week. Uh, if I'm going to create the shadows of this cheetah, and I've drawn these lines, like the shadow lines I showed a couple weeks ago. We'll pretend that the, the light source is up here to the right off screen. Well, so then what will happen is I will create a ground plane. We'll pretend that's a plane. And I'll just take, and you've seen us do it before, is take the shadow of the uh, cheetah. Or, or just take a outline of the cheetah and fill it and drop it down. Now here's the problem. We can use these lines to figure it out and that helps us figure out where the end of the shadow is. But the problem with doing something like this is if you start to pay attention, you'll notice that the paw is on the wrong side. He shot my paw. It really needs to be over on the other side. So what we're gonna need to do is make sure that whenever you're doing shadows, you don't take the shortcut to the point where it messes up your, your image. Uh, this was flipped so that the feet and the tail and all work right, but I would actually have to do some, a little bit of maneuvering to get this shadow to actually work right. But that's not the tip I wanted to share with you today. What I'll share you, with you today is that the shadow has to conform with whatever it's falling across. So if the, the, the ground falls away, you're gonna have to stretch that shadow out to match the way that the land or whatever it, it's uh, throwing its shadow on is, is shaped. So you always need to take in consideration the shape that the shadow's falling on. And here's the opposite direction. It warps and, and it crunches up in the middle based on the shape of that land. So you can still use the lines, but you've gotta pay attention to where those lines fall. The other thing that I wanted to recommend is that you start to understand how perspective works. And I'm, right at the end, I'm going to give you a great book to, 
to look at and uh, to learn a little bit better about perspective. But I just want to give you a quick tip on one of the ways that you can get a little bit more precise when you're working on perspectives. So let me show you this perspective trick. You've got a rectangle here that you, you apply, and uh, I'm just going to rasterize it real quick. Now let's say I want to Command T and I want to change the perspective of this box as if it's fading back into the horizon, something like that. Well, what if I need to know what the, the center of this box is now? If I hit Command T, I get this bounding box that shows the, the center of what's inside the box, but that's not what we need. Here, I'm going to mark that right there. What I need, if I hit Escape, is I need to find the visual center of this based on perspective. Well, there's a quick trip, trick that you can do if you understand how perspective works. And I'm simply going to grab my line tool, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to start at this corner, drag down to that corner. I'm going to do the same thing from that corner to that corner. And there, where those two lines cross, is going to be the new visual center of this. Now, if it doesn't quite line up, I'm just going to nudge it over. Now, look at the difference where the uh, bounding box center says with this mark right here versus the visual center of this box is. So if I now take this away, you'll, you'll be able to tell now that because of perspective, this is the visual center point of this box if it's actually traveling back in space. So uh, it really does uh, help if you understand how perspective works. And to that end, uh, if you come over here, uh, here's a, a great little thing. You can find it online. Here's a PDF version of this, and it's by Ernest R. Norling, and it's Perspective Made Easy. If you want to get better with your drawings and even your composites or whatever, definitely need to learn more and more about how perspective works, shadows, lights, all that stuff. This is a great book to get started with. Once again, that's Ernest R. Norling, Perspective Made Easy. You can check that out. And uh, that's kind of my tip to get you up and running, figuring out how light shadows and all that stuff works for you. So make sure you check it out. As a graphic artist perspective, awareness of perspective is critically important. So if, you, if you're if you just starting to get started with that, make sure that that's something you, you master pretty quick because that well, will help you in the end. Well, and a lot of people start out and they start playing, mm -hmm. but they don't have the foundation of mm -hmm. perspective and stuff like that. And then they spend a lot of time, time trying to fix stuff mm -hmm. that just doesn't quite look right. If you have the foundation, you can get there a lot you're gonna faster. You're going to find things a lot easier if you know that in the, in the forefront, yep. so. Great, thank you, Pete. All right, uh, we're gonna move right along. We've got some typical housekeeping, housekeeping things to do here. Uh, we have some giveaways, of course. And this week we have The Print and the Process by David Dushman. Right there, do you see that? We love David Dushman. That's a, a beautiful book, mm -hmm. and it's, it's about taking compelling photographs from vision to expression. Yes, great. See, I, I read that right there. Really, some visually inspiring stuff in there, of course. <laughs> you now um, need to go to kelby1.com slash webcast slash contest. Go down to the menu, choose the show, leave your email, your name. That's pretty much all you need to do, but by all means, leave a comment, joke, or any kind of insult that you might find Humorous, but not too insulting. Speaking of, I've got a joke from uh, a couple weeks ago. It's from uh, Casey Conradi, and she said, I wanted to share a math joke, and it's, Dear Algebra, please stop asking us to find your ex. She's never coming back, and don't ask why. <laughs> there you go. Bam. Ah, uh, okay. Bam. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. That was awesome. <laughs> um, do we have any uh, a Peach Pit deal this week? Yes, we do have a Peach Pit deal, and it's from our buddy Eric Vallon. If ah, you will go to peachpit.com slash Kelby1, <coughs> you will find this week it is portrait photography from snapshots to great shots by our buddy Eric. Uh, it's a great book. We love Eric. He is knocking it out of the park. If you go there and make sure to check out this ebook deal. You will get 40% off if you plug in the coupon code Kelby1 into the coupon code slot, mm -hmm. whatever that thing is. Wherever it says coupon yep. code. Kelby1. And uh, one more thing I'm going to leave you with. Um, I'm coming up on my seminar tour. It's going to be on August 1st in Miami Beach. So it's just looking next for week, that. isn't it? It's actually, yes, next week. So there you see the dates right there. And of course, I've got the Austin, Texas on August 13th. And New Orleans, which was postponed from June, is now scheduled for October 3rd. So you can go to kelby1.com and go to the live events uh, tab right there and find out more information on that. So I hope to see you there. And with that, I believe that concludes 
yet another episode. We do want to thank you guys for joining us this week. And Mr. Pete, thank you. Yep. And everyone else involved, we love you. We hope to see you yes. next time before we get canceled. <laughs> All right. See you guys. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye.